Hi YouTubers, Carl Piso here presenting more truth and facts. How the brain when it's stimulated and is ignorant of science tends to produce God, create God, demons and ghosts. Here is the reason it does. The ghosts were made of the same stuff that all of the ordinary matter we're, we're used to um, if that work. were the case, then ghosts would travel through solid It's not soul, it's just, just the air in our lungs stops stuff. Into my other so. hand, or my hand stops when I press against the just wall. Just a, a psychosis. Instead, we might imagine, though, that ghosts could be made of something different, something that's not atoms, something more exotic. <laughs> yep, like what? For instance, ghosts might be made of particles known as neutrinos. They're actually sometimes called ghost particles, that's their nickname, for the, uh. the very reason uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. Science's most likely building blocks for an apparition are ghost particles. If a ghost were made of neutrinos, then unlike normal matter, their particles would have no electrons surrounding them. Without a layer of electrons, these ghost particles carry no electric charge. And without a charge, they have no repulsive force to push against other matter. Dead, they can simply pass right through all objects in nature, including the walls of the prison. Yeah. That's, no That's why that. they call them ghost particles. No and, so. and wait a second, millions of neutrinos just passed through it. Yeah. I might be tempted to imagine that maybe the ghosts are made up of some particle like neutrinos. That you had before, then would you the die and they went around? It doesn't but make any sense. Kicker. If they were, they would not emit any light or electromagnetic radiation. And we're back where we started without a signal to see. That's right. You won't a see ghost it. made of neutrinos could pass through solid walls, but you won't see them. which would explain the locksmith sighting. It would be undetectable to ghost hunting technology. That's right. <laughs> if that's the case, there could be no solid scientific proof that ghosts exist. Exactly. It's in the, the sightings keep coming in. The sightings are in the I brain, really in the brain of the person. Auto suggestion, so probably ate some drugs. It feels as if we walk through. Oh, bullshit, you're, you're, you're feeling all that in the brain. I said darting. You forget that you have a brain, right? So to the other. Idiots. Idiots. Yeah, they have a problem with their brains, these other people. Visually, they'll have an apparition or something. That's what you experience things in the brain. See something, or behind them. Unless somebody hits you like with a guy in the head, the and then world. you have a cross that's stuck in your forehead, Charles and really, it goes exist. It feels like he's in the presence of a spirit. Oh, I need So Dr. Haran will test what psychologists call cognitive bias, in power of suggestion. Yes, the brain. Psychology tells us that people who believe in ghosts are a lot more likely to report paranormal encounters. Exactly. They Dr. Will. Haran sets up an experiment to investigate the concept yeah, only of believer will bias. See it levels of paranormal belief and will expectation have of having an experience yeah. tonight it's like should be the ones that have the most it's like Christ psychotics and the most frequent exactly people it's that believe in zombie Jesus Correct. and crap like that two groups of volunteers each participant has been carefully pre-screened using psychological questionnaires and yeah. interviews yeah. and be visit part of the prison that almost no one ever gets to see and each has a different background and a different level of belief in the yeah, paranormal. Exactly. The whole religious too. has presented the groups with conflicting information. He's given one group the strong suggestion that there are frequent hauntings at this prison. And the other, the suggestion that hauntings here are rare or non-existent. Yeah. The proofs will create God and this spirit is with our brains. And uh, infrasound waves affect us all and we don't realize it that's the the sounds that elephants use to communicate with infrasound you can hear them and this is the experiment here dr persinger uh created a god helmet and this affects the brain and makes you sense the presence of god neurotheology google dr persinger this will test a hypothesis suggesting that ultra-low frequencies or infrasound can elicit a fearful response yeah that it could explain some ghost sightings yeah magnetic wave sort of like a hum you can't hear yeah. and under certain environmental conditions electrical it might give temporal people the feeling that they are a feeling. having a tingling sensation the sense electric, of electrical impulse uneasiness yes. 
everything. To generate ultra low frequency It's like very high frequency, that only dogs can hear. Generate the sensation. They affect us too. But if you are ignorant of science and retarded and involved in uh, Christian beliefs and all that nonsense, then how would you know? You think it's God over there. And it's nothing but chemical reactions or, or magnetic uh, waves. So what we have here is a, a pretty vanilla subwoofer, as one might find in a home stereo system. We modified it by adding this tuned port that is tuned to 19 hertz. Humans can't hear the low tone of yeah. 19 there hertz. There we go, like elephants. But we can feel it. Elephants it is the frequency the that has been linked to some haunted locations. Yeah. There you go. That's the reason over 3,000 years ago, drums, the effect of drums causing these vibrations were God. In other words, the Ark of a Camp Covenant, you know, was nothing but a drum. It's been that's the reason you cannot find it. It's a drum. The same thing with trumpets and different instruments. They were sacred. They produced all these sounds affecting the brain. They were the God speaking. The radiocarbon dating um, gives it a date of around 600 years, and this is uh, entirely consistent with the uh, Lemba oral tradition. According to their traditions, there was an early Nagoma that somehow was destroyed, we don't know how, and then a new Nagoma was fashioned by the priests. It's this reason the Ark of the Covenant, the drum, the cradle of rumbling infrasounds, cannot be found because there was not in, in uh, Jerusalem, the Crusaders, none. The Romans went over there, none, because, you know, what we perceive as a drum today, you know, in ancient time, was a sacred uh, rumbling instrument of the gods that create fear on the enemies. As they enter cell block 11, which has the infrasound generator, the reactions are very different. The effects of infrasound are so dramatic that I even feel it. I didn't at the other end of the corridor, but as I'm walking down here like this, I feel a vibration in my body. <laughs> I feel a sense of anxiety already. It's very uncomfortable. <laughs> it's amazing that I know what's happening, and even I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> We're going to go see if they're having the same types of feelings. <laughs> I've been in here five minutes, and I'm already depressed, and like, you know, just lonely and isolated, and... Uh, it's all in the brain. It just feels horrible. You know, it feels... Imagine if they put that on churches. You know I mean, <laughs> People, priests collect a lot of money that way. Toward the back of the cell, it felt a lot more heavier than out here and kind of off balance a little bit. What do you mean off balance? Uh, and then I'm just like, you know, like kind of like, oh, where did that come from? It just feels more tense and heavy. Okay. Yeah, we're in the 21st century. There's no God. It's a creation of our brains. We can actually reproduce all that in the lab <laughs> and create God with all these sounds and chemicals. The microphones picked up infrasound at the cusp of human hearing. While the EMF sensors and camera traps recorded nothing, the IR cameras did. A growing blue image appears. A cooler area than the surrounding stone. Could this be? A spirit. It sounds like it might be rain. I mean, just, just from my experience, what a rain spectrum, you know, rain or any evidence that you guys have seen? With it. No, we've got an area up inside the skylight area that, to me, almost appears to be moisture. So we're seeing something going on that looks like rain, probably the sound of rainfall on the roof. To an eyewitness, it would have seemed like a ghost or a spirit circumstances the environment itself is producing physical stimulus yes, yes. that's inducing these experiences exactly there you go this is science for you so it's not just for the retarded uh, people that believe in it's god and crap like that and the spirits influencing people they will that they're not they will believe there's a spirit it's affected words, brains the experiences are very real to those who believe yeah. they have seen or yeah, felt because they're ignorant of science exactly exactly and even the individual all can play a role in ghost encounters. Yes. But for the 21st century, we realize that, uh, you know, uh, God is simply a delusion. It's an illusion, fantasies. Uh, demons, ghosts, and all that, they are a result of chemicals and electromagnetism outside influences on the brain. So uh, if you believe in God, you simply have a problem with your brain, especially if you are educated. And uh, we must all realize that.
Les has stamped out the neurological disorder of Christianity or religious beliefs in God. God doesn't exist. Pacha